Welcome to Python Basics, installing packages with pip. I'm Philip with Real Python, and I'll be your instructor for this video course. If you have followed any tutorial that contained a package that was not part of Python's standard library, you may have heard of pip. Pip is the funny sounding name for Python's package manager. That means it's a tool that allows you to install and manage libraries and dependencies that aren't distributed as part of the Python standard library. If you're wondering what pip stands for, it's short for pip installs packages. And in this course, you'll learn how that works. This is what we will tackle in this course. You will learn how to use the terminal, what pip is and why it's important, work with virtual environments. Now we'll explain this a bit later. You will install and uninstall packages. You will declare project requirements and you will learn how to find third-party packages. So while this course focuses on pip, you will also learn about the terminal and virtual environments, as you can see in the table of contents. If both the terminal and virtual environments are new to you, worry not, I will explain both of them and we will start with the terminal. Pip is a command line tool. That means you must run it from the terminal. So before we get into pip, let me show you how to find the terminal program on different operating systems. Let's start with Windows. You can find the terminal app in the start menu under terminal. When you start the application, you should see a window that looks like the one here on the slide. If you don't have the terminal app on your Windows computer, so if your system is a bit older, then you can download it for free from the Microsoft Store. You can find the link to the Microsoft Store in the description below. If you want to get more detailed instructions on how to install and open the terminal on Windows, then I can recommend the code conversation I had with Ian. In this video course, Ian gives you a great introduction into the terminal on Windows. So how to install it, how to find it, and how to use it. And Ian is also the author of our Windows setup guide. I know I'm biased, but I think this is the go-to guide for Python developers who work on Windows machines. Everything that you see with the terminal on this course, I will do on the Mac. But if you follow this installation guide and you use the terminal app that you got from Windows 11 or the Microsoft Store, then the commands are exactly the same and everything should work for you, just like you see on the Mac system. On Linux, click the Show Applications button at the bottom of your toolbar and search for Terminal. Then click the Terminal application icon to open the terminal. After opening the terminal, you should see a window similar to the screenshot you see in this slide. And it might also depend on which Linux distribution you're using. So each one has a different way to open the terminal and they might look a bit different. If you have any trouble opening the terminal on Linux, the real Python community will help you out in the comments below. I also had a code conversation about the terminal on Linux. In this video course, Ger Arne is joining me and is showing some helpful commands when using the terminal on Linux. As a Linux user, you might be comfortable in using the terminal anyway, but I recommend giving the code conversation a watch. I promise it's worthwhile. Okay, again, I might be a bit biased here, but Ger Arne is really showing some cool things. Similar to Linux on macOS, the terminal application comes pre-installed since, I don't know, the early ages. A common way to open the terminal application on macOS is by opening the Spotlight search and searching for Terminal. You can also find the Terminal app in the Applications folder in the Finder application. When you open the Terminal, you see a window that looks kind of like this in the slide right here. Wouldn't it be odd if I hadn't also have a code conversation for the Mac Terminal? It would be. So if you're curious about learning more about the terminal on macOS, then head over to the course I recorded together with Martin. The code conversations with Martin are always fun, and this one is no exception. In all of the code conversations about the terminal, the one on Windows, the one on Linux, and the one on macOS, I let Ian, Gerarne, and Martin perform some tasks they need to do in the terminal alone. So no use of any Windows at all, only the terminal. That's a great introduction to the terminal. If you have never worked with the terminal, this dark window with this blinking cursor can be a scary place. But 
it's an important tool you need to get used to in your journey as a Python developer. And it's essential when using pip. As I'm recording this course on the Mac, you'll see me perform certain tasks in the terminal, more specifically in the Mac terminal. But everything should work just like this in any other operating system. And now that you know how to open the terminal, keep it open because you'll need the terminal in the next lesson. Pip is a package manager for Python. It's basically the package manager for Python. And it allows you to install and manage libraries and dependencies that aren't part of Python's standard library. The concept of a package manager might be familiar to you if you're coming from another programming language. JavaScript, for example, has NPM, Ruby has Gem, the .NET platform has NuGet, Lua has Lua Rocks, and Rust has Cargo. Especially if you know one of these package managers, it's important that you don't think, oh, pip is just exactly like, for example, npm. Because some of the package managers that you're seeing here, they fulfill way more tasks than just managing external packages. Pip can be helpful for a bunch of tasks too, but to keep things basic in this course, you only need to remember this. The pip package manager is there for you to install, update, or uninstall external packages. External packages are third-party packages that are not part of the Python's standard library. One cool thing about pip is that it comes with your Python installation right away. So if you have the terminal open, you can check it on Windows with python space dash m space pip space dash dash version and on macOS or Linux with Python 3 and the same command to see the version of pip that's installed on your system. Running this command in the terminal shows you which version of pip your standard Python installation works with. Okay, so here you see me in my terminal on macOS. That's why I will use the Python 3 as the command. If you're on Windows, you need to use the Python command. And when I type Python, 3 dash m pip dash dash version and press enter. Then you see that the output says that my version is pip 22.03 from Python 3.10. For you, both the pip version and the Python version can be different, of course. My version of pip seems a bit out of date. So since pip is a Python package itself, you can use pip to update pip. The beginning of the command to update pip is the same like when you're checking the version. It's either python or python3 dash m pip. So that means you want to do something with pip. And then you use the install command with the upgrade option. Then you write pip at the end because you want to upgrade the pip package. Let's have a look how this command works in action. To upgrade pip, you type python3 dash m pip install dash dash upgrade pip and then you press enter and if a newer version of pip is available then it will be downloaded and installed otherwise you'll see a message indicating that the latest version is already installed this message usually says something like requirements already satisfied well actually let's check what this message exactly says you can press arrow up to traverse through your command history in the terminal. That's a convenient way to get a command you used before, and when you press enter, you perform the command again. So here I have the python -m pip install upgrade command. So if I press enter, then you see that it says indeed requirement already satisfied. Because we just updated pip, so there is nothing for pip to update there. With pip install, you install packages into your Python environment. So now that you upgraded your pip version, your standard Python version works with the current pip version. Installing packages into your standard Python version is not ideal, though. It's okay for packages like pip that you want to use system-wide. However, for other packages, you should be a bit more selective. Instead of installing them system-wide, you want to install them in something called virtual environment. 
In the next lesson, you'll learn about what a virtual environment is and how you can use it in Python. To avoid installing packages directly into your system Python installation, you can use a virtual environment. A virtual environment provides an isolated Python interpreter for your project. Any external packages that you're using inside this virtual environment will be independent of your system interpreter. This means that you can keep your project's dependencies separate from other projects and the system at large. Using pip inside a virtual environment has three main advantages. You can be sure that you're using the right Python version for the project at hand. You can also be confident that you're referring to the correct pip instance when running pip. And you use a specific package version for your project without affecting other projects. And as so often, the good news is that Python has the Venf module that helps you create virtual environments right out of the box. When you're in the terminal, you run commands from the perspective of your current working directory. To check what your working directory is, you can type pwd and press enter. So in my case, I'm currently in the real Python user folder of my operating system. To show you how to work with virtual environments, let's create a new folder first. For this, you use the command mkdir. Let's stay generic and name the folder project. So the command is mkdir space project. By typing mkdir project and pressing enter, I just created a new folder in my user directory. With the command cd, I can change into this directory. When you're in your project directory, it's a good idea to create a virtual environment before doing anything else. And you do this by typing python3 m venf venf. The first venf is the name of the module, and the second venf is the name of your virtual environment. You can name the virtual environment any way you want, but naming it venf is common practice. Agreed. It makes the command look a bit funny, but also more memorable. The important thing is that you remember that the first venf is the venf module name and the second is the name of the virtual environment you create. With the ls command, you can list the items in a directory. So as you can see, your project directory now contains a venf folder. Here's a quick recap. You create a virtual environment with python-m venf venf. This command uses your standard Python version to create a virtual environment. But one of the advantages of using pip with a virtual environment is that you can be sure you're using the right Python version for the project at hand. So if you have different Python versions on your system, you can use the Python version you want to use for this project with the venf command. That means you could also type python 3.9-m venf venf on the Mac or reference the full path on Windows to the Python executable of Python 3.9 on your system. This command creates a virtual environment with Python 3.9 linked to it, no matter what your system Python version is at this point. That's super handy if you want to develop a Python program and you want to make sure that it works in different Python versions. So you can create different virtual environments with different Python versions in them. However, so far, you only have created a virtual environment. And before using your virtual environment, you should activate it. The commands to activate a virtual environment are a bit different between Windows and macOS and Linux. On Windows, you execute venf backslash scripts backslash activate. And on Mac and Linux, you run source space venf slash bin slash activate. The first part, venf, is the folder name of your virtual environment. If you name your virtual environment different, then the command would be different too. Oh, and before you run this command, you need to make sure that you're in the folder that contains the virtual environment folder you just created. Because with this command, you execute a script inside your venf folder. To make sure I'm in my project folder, I type pwd, which stands for print working directory. I think I didn't mention this before. And to check if my event folder is present, I type ls. 
To activate the virtual environment, I run source venv slash bin slash activate. Once you can see the name of your virtual environment within parentheses in your command prompt, then you know that your virtual environment is active. You can type deactivate to deactivate it. But since I want to work with the virtual environment, I can activate it again by using the arrow up trick and find the activation command, press enter, and there you see venv in parentheses again. And with this activated virtual environment, you're ready to install external packages with pip in the next lesson. In this lesson, you'll perform some typical actions that you'll do when working on a Python project. You'll activate your virtual environment, install an external package, and list installed packages. Along the way, you'll learn a bit more about project dependencies. So this lesson brings the content of the formal lessons together. You'll use the terminal, a virtual environment, and pip. That's exciting, right? So let's hop into it. Here I am in the project folder. Notice that the prompt has no prefix environment name in parentheses. That means I currently don't have any virtual environment activated. Before activating the virtual environment, let's check something first. When you run python 3-m pip list, you can list the currently installed packages. Here you can see that my systems python has pip and setup tools installed as packages that were grabbed via pip. For you, there could be different packages listed. The important thing here is that these are the packages available for my systems python. We will come back to this in a bit. Now let's activate the virtual environment with source venv bin activate. And now there is venv in parentheses at the beginning. That means the virtual environment is activated. When I run the pip list command again, then you can see this. There is no real difference in the listed packages yet. So let's change that. To install an external package into a virtual environment, you must activate the virtual environment first. Then you use the pip install command with the package name. You used the pip install command before, but with the upgrade option. So to just install a package that isn't installed yet, you type python 3 m pip install and then the package name. As an example, you'll install the requests package. The requests package is used for making HTTP requests from a Python program. It's extremely useful in a variety of domains and many projects use it, but we won't use it in this course. It's just an example for installing an external package. In your terminal, you type the following python 3 m pip install and then the package name, which is requests. While pip is installing the request package, you'll see a bunch of output. Notice that pip first tells you that it is collecting requests. You see the specific file name that pip is downloading and the progress bar. After that, you see that pip installs four more packages, idna, charset normalizer, certify, and urllib3. These packages are dependencies of the requests package. That means that requests requires these packages to be installed for it to work properly. You can verify that these were requirements of requests by typing python 3-m pip show requests. The pip show command displays information about an installed package, including the author's name and an email and a homepage. It also lists that requests requires certify, charset normalizer, idna, and urllib3. Once pip is done installing requests and its dependencies, you can run pip list in your terminal again. Now pip list shows the packages that you installed as well. So when you install a package, more often than not, you also install some packages with it. That's an important detail about installing packages with pip. These other packages are called dependencies or requirements. 
If you wouldn't use a virtual environment for your projects, then your system's Python packages would clutter quite fast with all these dependencies. And this can be especially problematic as different packages require different versions of their dependencies. So with a virtual environment, you minimize this problem tremendously. To wrap this lesson up, deactivate your virtual environment and run the piplist command again. So let's type deactivate, enter python3-m piplist. And as you can see, your system's Python package list stayed clean and tidy. All right, now that you know how to install packages, I'll see you in the next lesson where you learn how to uninstall packages.